All right, so I already have the uh, the template downloaded here for historical, and I already have GIMP installed. So you go to your program bar, click on GIMP. And it opens up just an empty screen here, and you've got these tool or these tool menus. Uh, one is the toolbox. This is the one you're going to be using a lot because it has all of the different drawing, moving, and rotating tools you'll need to work with your images. Over here we have the layers menu. Right now it's empty. Uh, you'll be going back and forth with this one a lot because it is where um, you can deal with the picture in different layers so you can move things around independently. So you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment. So first things first, to open your file you want to go to File, Open as Layers, and I don't know if it'll do this correctly, it may just open it as one layer. Come on. Okay, it opens as one layer. That's fine, you can still work with it. Um, and you see that, that frame uh, that I told you about. Now notice it just flipped on its side. The reason why it's flipped on its side is this is the size and the layout you need to use when you send it to got print. So you can shift it and you can rotate it in order to work with it, but you're definitely going to move it back here before you send it. So you can either work with it sideways, but it looks kind of weird, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Now in order to flip, you want to go over to your tools menu and you want to look for a rotate tool. Now the tools menu, you can just hold your mouse over it for a moment and it'll show you what the tool is. So the rotate tool looks like the two boxes. It'll label it rotate tool. Click on it once. And the tools are a little funny in, in a GIMP. You've got to click once on the image and it'll activate the tool. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either click, hold down your mouse and move it and you'll see it rotate. So you can do that. I'm gonna let go. Or you can um, use this angle right here, which is sometimes easier if you're doing straight 90 degree angles. So I'm gonna hit Control Z. I'm going to hit cancel. That's fine too. Uh, click there. Okay, so I want to rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. Just hit 90, hit enter. Don't worry about that double image because um, that's uh, that'll get corrected real quick. So I'll rotate. There you go. Now don't be alarmed. See how it's kind of cut up? The image is actually still there. Uh, it's just because the canvas was still laid sideways. So what you can do is just go up to Image, select Fit to Canvas, and it'll enclose everything. Okay, so now we have it in portrait, and you want to put something behind that picture frame. Notice how there's checkers here. That doesn't mean that uh, that's what your image will look like. It means that it's transparent. So anything that you put behind this image will show up just like it would in a picture frame. So what you want to do is right now if you look over in the layers menu right over here there's only the background there's only one layer. Go ahead and go to layer new layer okay it creates another layer. Now see how that layer is on top that means that anything you put on this new layer will actually lay on top of the frame. We want it to be in back of the frame so go down in that same menu there's a green arrow. If it's active it'll look green. There's a green arrow that goes down. Click down and what I've done is I've switched the layers. You'll notice this background. I'll just call it frame. Okay, you're making me look bad. Um, so that frame is on top, that new layer is on the bottom. Whatever you have selected, see how it's blue? That's the one that you're working on. That's the layer you're going to be working on. So that new layer is where we want to put our images, our, our um, pictures, stock images, text, all those things that we were putting for our, our cards. Um, so this background right now, like I said, it's clear right now. There is no color. So something you may want to do very basically is, is just put some color there. Now, to do that, you can use the bucket tool. And what the bucket tool will do is, I'm going to click once on bucket, Right now it's set to foreground color fill. That means that if you look at these two squares, it's going to turn it to whatever color is right there. So it's going to turn it black. 
and all you do is click once to activate. Oh, let me make sure I'm on the layer I want to paint on. And then it'll turn that background black. You can use different colors. I don't like black. I want something lighter. It'll paint it pink. So that's one way you can fill in the background. There's, um, if you click on pattern over here, there's sort of different variations you can use. So uh, you can paint everything with a tiled pattern here. So there's different ones um, if, if that's where you want to go. Now another option that's kind of cool is right next to the paint bucket, there's, they call it the blend tool. It's a gradient tool. Click on that and then you can select two different colors. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to do blue as my first color. Black is my second color. And now what it'll do, if you look down here, the shape is linear and that means that uh, with this tool you're going to click your mouse down and then you're going to drag. So you see how I'm, hol I'm holding my mouse right uh, down right now. I'm not letting it go. And I'm dragging it down in a line and it creates this gradient. So it fades from one color to the other. D depending on your direction, you can kind of determine how it will uh, fill. A little line does a very sharp gradient, a long line does a very gradual gradient. So I'm Okay, so that's, um, that's basically some basic background tools you can do. Another thing pretty commonly is uh, you're gonna want to put pictures in here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a picture So keep that frame open and then open up the picture you want to add. So for instance, you may want to add your covers. Um, don't worry, just go to Windows and you can select your cover. Okay, so now they're two separate pictures, but I want to put this cover onto this frame. Now, there's two things you can do. You may want to take the whole cover in and uh, use that entire cover, in which case the quickest way to do that is to use control A to select all and then control C to copy it and then paste it over. So to do that you want to get a new layer again. We want everything on new layers just because it's easier to deal with. So you see how there's a new layer now. So I'm going to open up again the Taming of Mia Lin. I want that cover so I'm going to do a control A, control C, Control A will copy it all. I'm sorry, Control A will select it all. Control C, C is in Charlie, um, will copy it. Click back. And then I want the layer. Control V. I'm going to move, I always click this move arrow so it's neutral. Notice how it's added it, but there's this floating selection. It's a pasted layer. And you can't quite do anything with that layer. I guess you can. But um, you can't uh, can't do much with that layer until you get it down into this this frame right here. So I found that the way to do that is just to go up into anchor layer and it'll just move it down into um, that layer where we wanted to work with it. All right. So if you wanted to move your cover in, notice how it's kind of too big. So I want to shrink it a little bit. That's fine. Once again, you're going to go over, find the tool for resizing. It's called Scale. So click the Scale tool. And remember, when you click once on the picture, you'll activate it. Ta-da! Now, all you have to do is go to the edge right here, and you're going to pull your click down with your mouse, and then drag it in towards the center to get it to shrink. Now, a trick is if you hold down the Shift key, it will keep the proportions so you won't squish anybody's head. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to hold down my mouse, not hold down the shift key and try to shrink it, but if my hand's not good, see how I've shrunken my hero's head down he looks all squished? That's not cool. Um, control Z, Control Z will undo whatever bad thing you just did or you can also click cancel. So I'm going to try that again. This time I'm going to click on the picture and then now when I click on the uh, push, push down on my mouse, I'm going to hold down the shift key and then even if I, hey, it's not really doing that very well. It's making me look bad again, GIMP. Control Z, Control Z to undo. Do 
Don't tell me they don't have the shift key working here. That would not be cool. Click back on move. And then you can reposition your picture. Still a little too big, so once again, click on the scale. And this time, another way to do it is you can use these numbers to shrink it down without using your mouse. See this little, these two little um, links? Th that's actually a chain. It's broken right now. Click on the chain, and what it'll do is it'll do what I was telling you with the shift key. It'll constrain those proportions. So now I want the width to be 750, and it'll automatically keep everything um, proportional for me, and then recenter it. Now it's too small. Okay. And then always back to the move. So that's one thing you'll want to do is just move your whole image in. Now, another thing is you may not want your whole picture. Maybe you're just doing a stock image for the back of the card. So that's another common thing. You may just want part of it. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and um, delete the cover. And let's do this all over again. So this time, when we go over to the taming of Malin, we're only going to grab the hero. I just want to make a hero card, so I want to grab just his face. So at the top, there are some selection tools. You can select an oval, you can select in a square, you can select in a lasso. I'm not going to deal with that. So I'm just going to click on the rectangle select. And then what you do is you move it over, and then hold the mouse down and select the area of the picture you want. Now once that's selected, I'm going to hit Control c to copy, go back to my frame, go back to the layer I want, Control v so we'll move it in. Click on the move arrow. So you see how I'm not moving the rest of the picture, I'm only moving my hero, that image right there. That's because he's the one selected right now, he's on a different layer. Now when I like that, once again, I'm going to lock it. I'm just going to anchor it down to the layer. So now you have a partial image on there. Something that you might want to do is, you know, let's say you had the hero, but you don't want, you know, the heroine right here. You want to get her out of it, so you'll need to treat this image. Again, there's several ways that you can do it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you the erase tool. So the erase tool, you will set sizes. So right now it's at 11. Um, click on brush and then you can pick either a hard brush and let me show you what that means so I'm gonna pick a big one so it just is more visible what that means is um, and I'll also let me increase the scale so the scale is how large see that circle right there it's how large of an area you're gonna erase each time now right now I have a hard circle opacity 100 when I try to erase notice it looks like you take a big bite out of that and so sometimes that's very very hard it doesn't look really natural when you're erasing click a different brush. I'm going to pick a soft brush. See how it's all fuzzy? And then I'll do big just in. Now this time, you see the edges have that sort of faded effect. It's that fuzzy uh, that fuzzy brush basically that's doing it. And notice when you erase, you're erasing and you reveal kind of what's what's the background behind it. So, you know, just with that tool, there's a lot of um a lot of options you can do. If you want to get more fine as you get close to his face, you can pick a smaller brush. I'm not going to get too artsy, it's mainly just to show you how to do it. Um, opacity right here is basically how hard uh, the eraser tool, how hard you're pressing down. So if you actually decrease the opacity, you're basically erasing with less force, so you're only erasing partially like that and it gives you maybe a little bit more fine control. It allows you to fade in edges, do kind of fun things with that. So that's that's an option for treating the picture. There's a bunch of other things you can do too, but um, that's just something to, to, to play with.